Hi there and welcome to July 2024's solar update and my monthly stats video. So what's been happening this month? Well finally everything is perfect with Octopus in the house. Um, the in-home display unit is now working. Uh, they managed to kind of get that going by uh, me just basically talking to them over the phone and then kind of sending that some uh, commissioning signals. Uh, that's all come online and is fully working now. And also the home mini, which was tied to the gas account, which is, was a bit pointless because it's an electrical item, uh, is now on the electric account. So that's all working as well. And Octopus have given me £150 compensation uh, for my hassles along the way, uh, which obviously dates back to about November 22, uh, when the gas meter stopped being smart. So it's been a while to fix things out, but I'm glad to say everything is fully working. Um, and is working well. So let's get on with the stats. But before we get into the stats, let's just remind ourselves of my solar panel system. Uh, so 14 Jinko 390 watt panels, uh, totaling 5.4 kilowatts, 10 on the south and four on the east, and a solar edge four kilowatt inverter. So that's the solar side. On the battery side, we've got the three kilowatt AC inverter and the eight kilowatt Gen 1 Give Energy battery. And then of course, I've got a few extra bits and bobs such as the My Energy Eddy heating the hot water, the Harvey and the Herb, and the Hypervolt EV charger. Right, so this was the month of July, 2024, and the system production for the month was 699.79 kilowatt hours. I think we're just gonna call that 700 to be honest. And by the looks of it, I was getting very worried um, at the beginning of the month because you can really tell, for me anyway, in the East, that the half the month, it was split, really. The first half was terrible. I was expecting it that to carry on and the month to be very bad. But the second half really, really, really took off. Look at those numbers here. Um, way out, Lots and lots of days over 30. As before, I was struggling to get over 20 on some of those days. Um, I think kind of the lowest was about 10 kilowatt hours for my worst day. Yeah, had about three of those. Um, and the best day I managed to get away with was actually the last day of July at 34.448 uh, kilowatt hours on that day. So it was definitely, definitely, definitely getting better towards the end of the month. Now for the average, we want to just take a look at that. The average for the month per day was 22.57 kilowatt hours. And I just want to show you the panels on the roof for the month. So we've got the 10 on the south and the four on the east. As you can probably see there, they're very similar in summertime. So around 49 on the east and 50, 51 on the south. So it just proves, you know, that east makes too much, doesn't make too much difference um, to the south in the summertime. Obviously in the wintertime, it does make a bit more difference but it's not a big problem in the summer. So coming on to comparing it to previous years and months, is it better than last month in June? No, uh, June we had 766, I'd say this year we had 700, so 66 kilowatt hours uh, less. But last year, it is slightly better than last year, thank goodness, because last year was seven, uh, 676, and this year, as I say, 699. Uh, but the best year uh, so far for July was the first year, which was in 2022 in the red here. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy. Obviously, hopefully we haven't peaked in June already. I'm hoping that August um, is going to produce as well, because based on previous years in 2022, August was the same as July. And uh, in 2023, August was slightly better than July. So perhaps August can give us that or give me that extra kind of 700 kilowatt hours that I'm looking for again uh, or even more, hopefully. So this is the Hypervolt EV dashboard online. I'm just having a look at what we used in July, putting power in the cars overnight. So 380.891 kilowatt hours uh, for both of the cars. Uh, that's slightly up on June because we had um, some holiday days in June. So that's why that's gone a bit higher than it was previously. It's very much similar to, well, uh, April and May around that kind of figure. Obviously, 31 days in July as well. 
So what does that mean in figures for the hypervolt? Well, we, as I say, we use 388 kilowatt hours for the month. The total mileage on both the cars was 1,716 miles. And the total cost, if we take 388 and times it by 7p overnight on Octopus Intelligent, gives us 27 pounds and 16 pence. And if we work out the cost per mile for both the cars on average, it's 1.58 pence per mile. And in the summertime, we're getting 4.42 miles per kilowatt hour on average between the, both the cars. So this is the My Energy uh, dashboard. And in here, I can see how much uh, the Eddy has been using for the month to heat the hot water. So in July, we used 162.8 kilowatt hours in the Eddy. And that's a mixture of overnight on uh, Octopus Intelligent at 7p a kilowatt hour and also uh, during the daytime solar. If I click off the home values, you can see just the eddy values there. And you can see the main wide spikes there for the overnight kind of heating or the main tall ones there. And then you'll see the lower ones uh, just be sort of topping up the hot water uh, during the daytime from solar. So then if we break down the eddy power use by daytime and nighttime, you can see that overnight we use 97.99 uh, kilowatt hours. A cost of uh, £6.86 pence to heat the hot water for the month. And then we also use 64.83 kilowatt hours from solar in the daytime. Haven't put a price against that. Um, obviously, there's a sort of an opportunity cost price that that could have been exported at 15 pence per kilowatt hour, but instead uh, we heated the hot water through solar. But if we had have exported it, it would have been about worth about £15. Pounds. Right, and I just want to show you this from the Give Energy. Uh, dashboard for the inverter my ac inverter and my battery so this is the monthly look for july at what went into the battery so you can see here that most of it i top it up every night to 100 percent um, on octopus intelligent and then export everything else that i can at 15p a kilowatt hour so the yellow is the solar so you can see a little bit went in each day just to top up the battery um, but most of the month it was uh, populated by uh, the grid overnight and then if we go to the battery out as well, we can see the exports. So we can see that the um, the battery went to the grid uh, 70 kilowatt hours I exported uh, in the evening, what was left over before 11.30, before the cheap time again. But you can see some blips in here, like on the 30th where I forgot to do it. Uh, so it's not showing up in red. And the first few days of the month when I was on holiday and wasn't here. Uh, but the rest of the month, I kind of try and export a little bit to get a little bit more money back uh, instead of leaving it kind of half full when I go to bed, which it can be. Um, so the rest of the uh, battery going out was the battery to the home in the kind of greeny turquoisey color. Okay, so onto the octopus electricity use. So the import for the month, uh, we actually used 808.2 kilowatt hours uh, from octopus. And I'll break that down in the stats uh, to show how much we used at nighttime and how much we used at daytime. Then if we look at the monthly use through each day, you can see there that we had a little bit of a peak day there. I've put more power into the car and then a couple of lower days there as well, just under kind of well, 43 kilowatts and 40 kilowatts. So a couple of car refills there. The rest of the month was fairly average uh, for the hot water and the battery uh, to be filled up overnight and one of the cars completely as well. So around sort of just under 30 kilowatt hours on average per night. Regarding export for the month, uh, we actually exported 465.3 kilowatt hours, uh, pretty much down on last month, mainly because we didn't generate as much solar um, in July compared to June. As you can see there for the daily uh, export, it really did vary, didn't it? Um, what have we got there? There's hardly anything. For some reason, we had a bit of a blip on that day. Nothing was exported on the fourth, which I find hard to believe, but we have a gap. Um, and obviously you can tell there that as more solar was generated for the, in the second half of the month, you can see that we just exported more of it. So it does kind of fit quite nicely uh, in comparison with the solar uh, generation graph as well. All right, so let's look at some numbers for July then. So grid import, if we break it down, we use just over 800 kilowatt hours overnight. Now at the brilliant reduced price on intelligent of 7p, 
Uh, it's gone down from seven and a half pence to 7p now, which saves us a, a few pounds a month. Uh, so that equals 60 pounds and 21 pence. Uh, daytime rate, we used 4.38 kilowatt hours at uh, 24 pence, which equaled one pound 50. And the export, 465 kilowatt hours, I say not as good as June when we exported 535, but the 465 times 15 pence gives us 69 pounds and 80 pence uh, for the export for the month. Gas, well, I didn't really hardly use any, did have the hob on tiny bit for cooking. We ended up using uh, 11 kilowatt hours at 5 pence or 5.4 pence at the moment, and that equals 60 pence for the month. I did have a look at Octopus Gas Tracker again for the East of England, and the average price for July is was uh, 4.27 pence. So it's still below the kind of uh, flexible rate. So I shall be looking at that come winter. Not moved yet. Too hot for that. So the standing charges then gas 28.95 pence a day times 31 days in July gives us £8.97. The electric is 47.85 pence a day times 31 days that gives us £14.83. So to sum up then 60 pence used in gas plus the standing charge of 8.97 gives us £9.57. And on the electric side we used £61.71. Uh, that's import usually on octopus intelligent overnight uh, plus the 14 pounds and 83 pence for the standing charge but minus the 69 pounds and 80 pence for the export leaves us with a total electric bill for the month of six pounds and 74 pence and just to remind you that of the 61 pounds and 71 pence uh, that we imported overnight 26 pounds and 60 pence uh, went in the cars so if I add up the gas cost plus the electric cost, we spent £16.31 in total for the month of July. So that was the July stats for 2024. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, give us a like. And uh, don't forget to leave your details about your solar generation in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.